Hey guys, it's Jan, and today we're doing a uh, quick Inish Daddy video. Or, no, it's a tech vlog. This is a tech vlog. You're watching a shitty tech vlog with Jan, and so today we're going to talk about bent motherboard pins. So, actually, just what I do on my spare time. Um, this is going to be the second one. The first one's going to be upload after this, uploaded after this, so I shouldn't really call this the first one, but this is actually going to be the second one, so we could do things in chronological order. So, um, for those who don't know, I like to buy motherboards really cheaply on eBay and then repair them. So I got this one for 51 bucks. Actually, let's go on eBay right now. Uh, it's really hard to hold things with one hand. And um, go on my eBay and we're going to see what I bought. So, uh, let's keep this camera running. Alright, so I bought this motherboard. This is a Gene Maximus, whatever. We're just going to actually use it for the pictures. So... Nope, I want to see the original listing. And we're going to see the condition of this board. Uh, eh, close enough. So, let's see if we can zoom in. So you can see those pins are destroyed. Like, oh my goodness. Mm, there's also one broken one that was down there also. But you can see a couple, there's one, there's one right there one really bent one and then this like this socket just like destroyed so this is the same exact motherboard that was in that listing and here I'm going to be repairing I'm here to repair it. so let me just go over the tools that I use in repairing motherboards like this and um let's go I think I'm actually missing some of them because I tend to clean up for the video because my desk is a mess because I don't know and I have no idea where that screwdriver went well, anyway, here's the tools that I normally use, and I'll just find them when I... Actually, I really should find this one, because this is kind of an important tool. Okay, well, let's go over the normal tools I have. So, we have a screwdriver right here. So, this is a Torx screwdriver, or hex screwdriver, you want to call it. I use... This is a T... I can't tell what this is. I think it's a 7. No, it's a T13, isn't it? T15. Yep, T15. And what I actually use it for is unscrewing the actual socket itself, so it's easier to play around with it. So it's easier if I had two hands, because it can just hold the top and then spin the bottom. So I, I usually do the top two screws. Bottom screw can stay, because it doesn't. you don't have to hold it, you just do it like you would on a normal socket. Pull this out, pull over, and then pull the whole entire socket plate off. That's that. The other tools I use, a kind of pencil. Uh, if there's lead in it, just I use it for writing also. When there's no lead in, I use the open end tube to just um, unbend pins. I also use the smallest needle I can find because um, it's easier to play around with. And you can use the actually use the end of it because smaller needles have a smaller loop for the thread. And then you can actually take a needle from the bottom and instead of just like picking it out, you can actually try to hook it up and then pull it up and. It tends not to break that way. There are tweezers for pulling up um, pins, or if I need to pull them out, and I'll talk about pulling them out later, or if I need to insert a pin in later on. Uh, other screws, we have my snap-on tools that I use for um, computer building, but these are helpful for cutting. This has wire cutters, as long being no needle nose pliers, um, so I use it to cut the wire that I do use. And then we need to have like thin wire that we use as replacement pins. So the sheet I have here is what I call the initial soccer repair form I made myself so I can use it to log off all the different pins that we have here. So you can see I X'd out pins that are broken, S for short pins that just got bent from cut from the top, um, V for bent, although I fickle bent pins so there aren't any here, and R for repaired. I didn't write any of them because I mean, we need to test it out. Um, I tell you, I just say what the received price, motherboard, model, and stuff, and write in the number if there's a number, if I have more than one of the same model. And if it posts, I'll write the date and when it posts and how it posts. I write down all the pins and tell it, um, you know, I'll go over that process in just a moment. So, what I do here is I write down all the pins. I don't actually use the color coding here. Why is it so blurry? I write down all the, um, I don't even use color coding, I just write down all the pins and then I try to use the letters, so it goes by letters this way, and numbers here. I do have the uh, sheet inverted, so the letters and numbers are in kind of a strange part, so I did it, so it's the orientation of what most motherboards are going to be in, the socket in that way, 
So, yeah. And to figure out, so the process of doing this is we're going to try, we prioritize all the pins that we need to in like a quote unquote priority queue. So, um, we're done what each of the uh, pins are, referencing the actual official Intel sheet. So, this is the processor line and signal information. Um, it's eight of the actual data sheet for Intel Ivy Bridge, I believe. Um, and here it tells you the LAN grid. This is the original grid that was used as a base for making this chart. And then we have the entire chart for all 1,155 um, CPU pins. And it tells you everything that's there. So P3 or P, like uh, P3, R2, T4, UT, uh, UT, U2. It's all PCI Express pins. Um, see all these pins are CMOS. Different clock, I don't know what that means. Analog pins, um, all those awesome pins, and then you can keep going on. Here's all reserved pins, so AB6. If I go to AB, where is AB? AB6, this is a reserved pin, like all the white ones are reserved. Um, reserved pins. DDR3, these are all the RAM pins, so the ones around this section, all RAM pins. DDR3, a lot of RAM, a lot, of, I have like five pages of RAM pins. Okay, and now we go with all the VCC, which are all the red ones you see there, and that's going to be most of it over here. So the two pins, the three pins actually, that I don't really, I prioritize last are RSVD, which stands for reserve pins, so those are the white ones that you see there. Those little grayish ones, not the white ones, the white ones are important. The grayish ones, and then I do the VCC. Is it VCC? Yeah, VCC, which are the red ones. Those are um, power, the CPU. So as long as you, if you break one, so if there's one right here, this is a D18. So with D18 broken, um, as long as the other ones around it are still fine, there's no problem there. Uh, VSS, which are ground pins, those are the green ones you see here, here, so they just connect all the power to the grounds, and then all the uh, connections here also have lots of grounds around them. Um, and that's that. So what you actually see is there's like 15 broken pins here. You can see I repaired a lot of them. It looks a lot better than that picture. Focus. It's really hard to focus on pins because it doesn't know what to focus on. Okay, but it's a lot better than what you see in that picture right there. So I've done quite a bit of work on this uh, socket already. It's not focusing. Focus. That's not focusing. Let's see if I can turn off the uh, smart auto. Yeah, whatever. Um, so that's what I do there. So um, I prioritize if any of these pins are broken, I will tend to leave it out. Um, and because they can usually, uh, they usually don't matter if they're all just power pins because there's a bunch of them over there. That's where all the power of the CPU goes on that little left this quadrant right here. That's where all this um, power goes. Yeah, really should find the camera so you can actually see. All the power is all over there. And then all the ground pins that are in between, as long as there's like one ground pin that's touching it, it's fine. So I might have to repair one of these because they're all ground pins that broke off. So I need to repair maybe one of them so there's consistency among them. Um, and then all the other pins that aren't either of those three, or non-existent pins, like reserve, or like the extremely, um, reserve pins, so you see on the notice here that certain pins here are reserved on Ivy Bridge, as opposed to Sandy Bridge, which are actually used, um, then we can, we can omit them. So I always try to reference it here, not just using the pictures that we have here. So, uh, this pin should be fine if I remove it out. It's short, it's not making contact, but if it makes a slight contact, it doesn't matter. It's a ground pin, don't have to care too much about that one. There's one over there and there and there. It should be able to be just fine. If I need to find a time to repair it, I'll repair it. Um, these blue pins I'm going to need to repair because they're required. Um, you can see what these, these are. AC, AC8, which I wrote down is FDITX. I don't know what that means. Um, well, that that's it. So that's how my uh, that's how I work. I try to use this thin wiring. It's wiring that you find in twisty ties. Um, sometimes, if you need, if you have a thicker wire, you might be able to get away with um, taking a pin, putting into where a pin broke off, and just get something to jam it in there so it opens up the pin. Don't do it too hard because I already have a stretched out pin, but it's luckily a ground pin. 
and there's like five of all around it, so that, there's a pin right there. I don't need to repair it, so that's fine. So there's like 14 pins that need to be that are broken off, but in all reality, I only need to replace one, two, three, four actual pins, and the CPU should theoretically boot. Will it be stable? Maybe. Um, that little block there, the little block that I see right there, it should probably might have to have one pin replaced in there, and um, that should be fine. So this is um, a way if you uh, are poor and you need awesome hardware like this. Like this is an awesome board. Like you have like onboard start and reset. I don't have a case for this board yet. Plan to get Obsidian uh, 300D if I repair fix. If I get this board working, I'm actually going to sell my Maximus 5 Extreme. So, that, not Maximus 5, Maximus 4 Extreme. So that should go and that should pay for things, that should pay for an extra power supply and a new case, theoretically. So that'll be awesome. And uh, that's, that's that, pretty much. Uh, that's how I go about fixing motherboards. So, Jen, this is my tech blog. And I'll check you guys out tomorrow for another tech blog. Yay! Oh, I forgot one more thing. This is the last tool I was looking for, just searching around for it. This is my Phillips head screwdriver. I don't use it as a Phillips head screwdriver for this case. Um, what I do use it for is this is a magnetic tip. So when pins like break off and go astray, um, I just use this to go and clean it up. Just pick up all those uh, extra pins. I'd be careful when I'm using. I'm careful when I use this around pins that I repaired because it actually picks them up also. So this is actually a really strong magnet. So that's that. So a magnetic screwdriver helps a lot. You don't want to like get them in between here and then you want to short something on, unfortunately, and you break your board. So you now they're in here, 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 whatever. So just use it to clean up little bits of pins because copper is really conductive. So that's that.